Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to my chemistry channel. And in this video, we're going to be learning about how to find the mass of a mole. Now in the last video, we learned about what is a mole and how many particles there are in a mole of a substance. We also learned about the volume of a mole of gas at STP. But sometimes it's a lot more practical to talk about the mass of something. In the laboratory, whenever we measure something out, most likely we're going to be using a balance. We're going to be measuring something onto that balance and measuring the quantity of something in grams. And so it's very useful to know what is the mass of a mole. Well, there isn't one magic number that tells us the mass of a mole for all substances. As it turns out, it's different for every substance out there. As it turns out, one mole of any element is equal to its atomic mass expressed in grams. So if you look at the periodic table, you can find that element and then look at the decimal number there. That's the atomic mass, just like we've learned earlier in this video course. So for example, if you look at magnesium, Mg, one mole of magnesium is going to be equal to 24.3051 grams because 24.3051 is the atomic mass of magnesium. Now that's a pretty neat thing that you can do because that means that you can take a balance and you can weigh out 24.3051 grams of magnesium and then point to that and say, hey, that is one mole of magnesium atoms. That's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium in that little uh, sample of magnesium. That's called counting by weighing. It's like, for example, if you had a jar of jelly beans and you want to know how many jelly beans are in the jar. Well, one way that you could do that is take the mass of one jelly bean and then see what that is in grams, and then find the mass of the entire jar of jelly beans, uh, take all those jelly beans, uh, weigh them out, and then divide the total mass by the mass of one jelly bean, and you can find out how many jelly beans are in the jar, assuming that all the jelly beans have the same mass, of course. Now, that's kind of what we're doing here. We're counting by weighing. Now, let's take a look at some other substances. Let's say we have one mole of carbon. What's that mass going to be? Well, once again, we can look at the periodic table and we see it's about 12.011. In a beginning chemistry class, in, in high school chemistry, it's normally sufficient to round off to four significant figures. For most of these elements, two decimal places for these atomic masses. So for one mole of carbon, it's fine to say that the mass is about 12.01 grams. That means you can take 12.01 grams of carbon, just find that mass on a balance, and then you can point to that and say that is 602 sextillion atoms, one mole of carbon atoms. Now how about nitrogen gas? Well, we can look at the periodic table and see that the uh, atomic mass of nitrogen is about 14. Uh, 0, 0, 0067 approximately, so times that by 2, it's about 28.02 grams of nitrogen gas. Now, some students say, why is it twice the value of nitrogen? Well, because nitrogen is a diatomic element. When you have nitrogen gas in the air, as an example, it's not in it's N2. It's one of those seven diatomic elements that we learned about earlier in this course whenever we were learning about the periodic table. Now we can do the same thing for chemical compounds as well. If we have water, H2O, well we have to take the atomic mass of hydrogen and multiply that by two and then add in the atomic mass of oxygen. So you can look at the periodic table and see that that's very close to 18. It's about 18.02 grams. So that means that you can weigh out 18.02 grams of water and then point to that and say that is 602 sextillion molecules of water. So this is how we find the mass of a mole. Now let's do a couple example problems here. The first one asks what is the mass of 0.351 moles of sodium metal? So once again, to solve this problem, we're going to start by writing out 0.351 moles. 
And since we're solving for the mass, that's going to be grams. I'll put grams way down here at the end, since that'll be my final unit. And in my conversion factor, I have to put moles on the bottom. That way it'll cancel. And then grams will go on top, since that's what I'm converting to. And I can look at the periodic table and see that the atomic mass of sodium is about 22.99. So 22.99 grams in one mole of that substance. So now I can cancel moles, top and bottom, just like this. And on my calculator, I take 0 0.351 times 22.99, and I find that the mass of this sample is going to be about 8.07 grams of sodium. So here's a very uh, straightforward way that we can convert between moles and grams. Now let's try another example. Let's try a chemical compound. Because some students, especially as they're starting out in chemistry, have a little trouble with this. We haven't specifically talked much about chemical compounds yet. That's coming up very soon in this course. But let's say we have 100.0 grams of Na2O. So that's a chemical compound called sodium oxide. That's equal to how many moles? Well, it's done just like the last one was. We start by writing down the 100.0 grams of Na2O. And then at the end, we're trying to solve for moles. So moles will be my final unit. And in my conversion factor, I'm going to put grams in the denominator. That way it'll cancel. And then since I'm converting to moles, I'll put moles on the top. Now, how many grams are in one mole of Na2O, sodium oxide. Well, we have to consult the periodic table. And sodium is about 22.99, but we have two of those, two atoms of that in this substance. And oxygen is about 16.00. So when we add all those together, we get a total mass of one mole of 61.98 grams. Okay. By the way, that value is called the molar mass. And that makes sense because that's the mass of a mole of something. So we say that the, the molar mass of this substance is 61.98 grams per mole. So now we can take the grams and cancel that top and bottom. And on our calculator, we're going to take 100.0 divided by 61.98. And when you do that, you find that the answer is about 1.613 moles of this substance, sodium oxide. And you can convert to, from grams to moles for any substance as long as you have its formula or if you have its molar mass, you can solve for that value. Hey, I hope you learned something from this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please slam that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. In the next video, we're going to learn how to do some multi-step problems with mole conversions. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.